Yahoo YouTube. I am Super Genki. In today's video, we're going to talk about self-talk and coping mechanisms. I feel that in quarantine, a lot of us are looking to these coping mechanisms to help us fill gaps of time, motion, and feelings, right? And a lot of these coping mechanisms are not good for binge consumption, you know, like playing video games. Binge playing video games is not a good way to cope with the reality that we're currently in because it gets old really fast. If you play a game for 24 hours over the span of a week, you're probably not going to have the same feeling that you had the first time you played that video game the first hour. Because the more you binge out on something, the more you content, the more of that something you need to consume in order to get the same feeling that you had originally. And I noticed this today that self-talk is actually one of our biggest coping mechanisms in life. Not just in quarantine, but in life on a greater scale. And I want to talk about that today. Because self-talk, and it includes our conscious thoughts as well as our unconscious assumptions or beliefs tends to be the way that we deal with external circumstances. I think we need to learn consciously to talk to ourselves because, you know, I think a lot of our self-talk is done in reactions to our environment and reactions to our current life situation. And that's a lot of that is outside of our control. So when we talk to ourselves about things that are outside of our control, the feelings we have and the perceptions, the beliefs, the assumptions tend to be outside of our control as well. And they're not based on reality. But I think it's so important for us to come together and to really think about how can we be more realistic about what we're telling ourselves? How can we establish routines and rituals to be able to talk positively to ourselves? Because, you know, I don't remember the last time I said anything negative to myself, but I also don't remember the last time I said anything positive to myself. I had to force myself to do it today because when I wake up, I do 100 push-ups. And usually speaking, I get to like 30 or 40 because I'm not that strong right now. And then I'm like, oh, I have to take a break. And then every 10, I say one of my positive affirmations. And this is the first day I've ever done this because I'm terrible at remembering to talk positively to myself. Usually I'm just having this like back and forth conversation about positivity, but it's not me talking to myself. It's me talking to you. It's me talking to the world. It's me talking to whoever's listening. It's not the same kind of idea. So I think it would be beneficial if we all learn how to talk positively to ourselves, have times to do it, have places to do it in quarantine that way for the rest of our lives because quarantine is not going to be forever it's probably going to end somewhere around august based on some assumptions i'm thinking about that um, we already have treatment for covid19 that's been and only proven to be successful um, the numbers of infected countries with high infection rates are already starting to flatline again i could be wrong but i know that the treatment's working out really well and we have to think about what's going to happen after quarantine is over because that's what's the most important thing. Do you want that day to be like just another New Year's Day? Do you remember the resolutions you had during New Year's? Neither do I. I don't want the day after quarantine to be like a New Year's resolution. You know, I don't want to be like, yeah, I'm going to be better and choose to fight for my life more and then forget to do it like the next. So I think the best way to do that is to start preparing today. Start making sense of what's around you right now. Because if you can be better in quarantine, you would be better after quarantine is over. But if you can't be better in quarantine, there's no chance of you being better than how you were before quarantine. Because we're not designed to remember these feelings. We're not designed to remember this stuff. We just want to go back to normal. So many people want to go back to normal and go back to their comfort zone. But I would urge you to rethink about your comfort zone. Rethink about how you think about operating inside your comfort zone and start planning because every day is a little different every day is a little different on quarantine every day is monday in quarantine first of all every day is a monday right and how do you look forward to mondays i don't know but every day is a monday on quarantine and we really have to think about how we're going to use this time anyway you two that's the video for today thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one bye bye